Hi, my name is Scott Dunn. I'm a certified enterprise coach and a certified scrum trainer. And I wanted to do a very short video on some issues that have come up recently working with a couple of companies and their agile adoption, agile transformation, next level of agility, whatever you want to call that. And the reason I'm just posting this video uh, outside of our normal flow of videos is that uh, I'm concerned that a number of things that are going on inside these companies are actually easily remedied by just following some of the basic practices. Now, I'll put a caveat that they're not necessarily covered in the Certified Scrum Master class. I teach that, but the learning objectives are pretty set for single co-located cross-functional team. There's things that are needed for your stakeholders that are outside that. So let's talk about adding that on and maybe where you could get some help with that. So let's just start from the top. What do, uh, what do execs and leaders want? Over and over and over again, what do we hear from that? So what I'm hearing from them is they want to know that these deliverables can be done on time, that we're gonna be ready when we say we're gonna be ready. And part of that is predictability, that they can see that we're trending, no surprises. All the time I hear this, no surprises, no such thing as a good surprise, etc. So where's our predictability? And then last, this may be unspoken, I think that they think it's obvious, but really, what we're uh, working on, what we're going to deliver in IT, it meets their expectations. Whether that's what's been written in the scope, whether that's what's been signed off on, if you're doing sign offs, whether that's what other senior leaders think it's going to be versus the stakeholders slash customers, whomever, doesn't matter. In the end, if there's a gap between their expectations and what uh, the software developers or IT has delivered, guess who's wrong? Right, so it's gonna be IT, so it's gonna meet their expectations, and that is sometimes a bit of a guessing game. So what can we do about it? Now, <laughs> you're probably thinking, we've seen this movie before. The whole reason that we're here doing Agile is because Waterfall didn't work in software development. Just look at the Agile Manifesto. So what are we talking about here? We say on time, predictable, meeting their expectations. So number one, are you doing release planning? That is, over the course of several sprints, sprint one, two, three, etc. I can see that you're trending to deliver what you say you're going to do and you're giving a chance for them to see every step of the way that they're getting what they thought and if not you know right away I don't find out with two weeks left in the six month effort that this is not what they're expecting I find out in week two of the six month effort that this is not what they're expecting so when we got to do release planning and plan it all out now a lot of the companies unfortunately you can't honestly tell me what you're doing just one or two sprints out. We're very reactionary. It's last minute. People are injecting stuff into the middle of the sprint that we didn't see coming, right? Remember the, uh, don't let your lack of planning become my emergency. So we, we can't thoroughly look at, you know, two, three months or whatever the scope of this effort is and have estimates to it and therefore just simply track it. I think also people aren't using the tooling as well as they can, whether that's Jira or Azure DevOps. To actually say we can plan that out and show it regularly to the stakeholders. So we've got to do release planning. And part of that is are you doing relative team estimation? Getting the whole team together using story points. It's a much better form of getting a solid estimates. I hear the wisdom of crowds. No one of us is smart of all of us. A relative, relative comparison is absolutely better than doing it in hours. There's just no doubt. This work compared to work we've done before, this team working on this stuff, it's going to take three times as long or two times as long. That's accurate. If we do things like in hours, well, fast forward three, four, five months, does that seem accurate, that 80-hour estimate? Well, no, you probably learned a lot more. Like, gosh, the software's crazy hard or Tim left or whatever that is, and it's not 80 hours anymore. It's like, heck, crazy, right? 120. Well, guess what's, guess what's in the project plan? right? 80. So now we've got some problems. If I said it was 80 points and the software's harder than we thought and Tim left, you know, we used to do 40 points of sprint, but because of these challenges, we're only doing 20 points of sprint. It floats with you. It maintains its, its meaning for it. So we've got to do relative estimation, team estimation. So I'm just going to go back, like, are you pulling this forward and doing the, you know, planning poker cards uh, with your team? Next, reality check that scope. <laughs> so we're looking at uh, the scope here, for me, what this means is product owner comes and says, I want X, Y, Z. I want a screen that does these things, so these fields, captures these data items. Well, there is a good, better, best version of that. Which do they want? Obviously, I'm sure they want to go with ideally this. 
But if we're trending on that burn down chart and we're not getting there, right? Unless we're floating out here, guess what you have to cut? You gotta cut scope. How do you cut scope without telling stakeholders you're not gonna get this thing? Well, you do the good enough version of that, right? Still say, yes, you get enhanced reporting, but it's a lighter treatment. The devil's in the detail. So reality check that scope. You gotta work with your product owner in a way that the team's giving them options, good, better, best, etc. And next, do things ever change at your organization? If so, make a plan, but plan on replanning. We've got to keep coming back. And I keep saying too much that we both try to hold the original scope. And then all these new things come in as well. But we're not going right back to the stakeholders, especially via the release planning to say, hey, these new things come in. That either pushes out the date or we're dropping something else. But you got to do it in an easy way for them to track and simply see the what if analysis of that. Me simply saying, well, we can't fit it in. It's going to be met with... Well, get creative, see what you can do, right? That, so cause you're not helping me understand the reality of it. So we've got to replan that. And what's happening right now is we just get way too much rollover. Couldn't get it done, rolls over to the next one. Couldn't get done. And so now we don't really even know we are on the original scope. So if I was to go back through that, double check that you are doing release planning, that you are doing relative team estimation, that you're actually really giving multiple options to your product owner for that scope. And you're planning on replanning by putting that back in front of them. And again, these things are not part of the core CSM class. They might be in the, depending on the trainer, but they're not core to the LOs, the learning objectives to do that. But it's easy to add that. Uh, reach out to us. You might want to just join one of the, uh, the coaching circles, coaching sessions, meet with other scrum masters from other companies, see what they're doing, seeing how they're solving the same problems. You don't need to hit your head on the wall uh, and learn the hard way every single time. Leverage the experience of others. Uh, who have gone there before and can simply say, here's what we've done. Those stories of, you know, actually, boss, here's what they're doing with the other company goes a long way, not just that it really can work, but now you give your boss a real story that they can go back and push back and say, actually, this is what this other company is doing. It's a little bit like when they used to say, no one ever got you know fired for choosing Microsoft. You want to go with what someone else's proven experience, not just take a risk. And certainly, my friends, if you love Agile, Awesome. You're not going to convince senior leadership, executives, customers, or your management by saying, but Agile says we're supposed to do X. They don't care. They don't care what they want. And as I like that, what they want is on time predictability and meets their expectations. What I see happening is because we're not doing these things right over here, uh, I'm going to put this in red so we all say, because we're not doing these things, and maybe because we don't know who's in charge of on time predictability, you know, scope management, PMO. And what are the tools that they use? Plan it all up front. Pull requirements up. Break thing, work breakdown structure. Break that stuff into hours. Former PMP. I know this story. And it's a mirage to think, but it gives a feeling of control. And that's the way that they know to do things. It's familiar. It's comfortable. Uh, and do it harder is going to get us there. But again, we know this story. Rewind 20 years plus. That's why Agile came out. I think we're kind of forgetting some of that. And also because, honestly... 99% of people take the CSM and nothing else, thinking that that's enough. Everything there on the right, not really being covered, if being covered at all in the CSM. I'm glad it's good for the career. As far as getting a job, if you want to be successful at the job, there's a lot more that we need to be looking at. So hope that's of some help to you. Feel free to reach out, rocket9solutions.com, see what we've got going on. We'd love to be a support to you on your agile journey. Good luck.